Uh, thanks for being here, everybody. At uh, roughly 10 o'clock this morning, I dismissed Paul Wolf as our football coach at Washington State University. Uh, it was not an easy thing to do. Uh, I got to say, in the 30 years I've been in this business, I've met no finer man than Paul Wolf. And Cougars everywhere should be thankful and appreciative for what he's done for our university and this football program. Now, having said that, uh, it's my feeling that we're at a juncture with uh, Cougar football that uh, is critical. We've got uh, $80 million stadium renovation, another $80 million of needs in facilities for the sport of football. We have the lowest annual giving numbers by far in the Pac-12 conference. And I feel we have apathy in our fan base. So it's my plan and my hope to bring some energy into that fan base and provide a spark by changing leadership. And that primarily was the reason for the change that I made. Uh, we will start the search for the successor immediately uh, later this afternoon. I hope to have somebody in that position with, within the next two or three weeks, if at all possible. Recruiting, of course, is very important. Uh, we have several verbal commits. Uh, we want to hang on to as many of those as we possibly can, and that's why uh, moving fast in the process is extremely important. Um, I think with that, I'll take some questions. And uh, as I understand, Bill will do some some other uh, one-on-ones and, and such a little bit later. So, Vince? Well, since you've been here, you've said that Paul Wolf was the guy to take this football program into the future. What changed? Well, I've, I supported Paul ever since I got here, uh, and he knows that. Uh, we had a good relationship. I think we still do. Again, as I, as I mentioned, I, I think the world of him and his family. Um, you look at the stadium, uh, no butts in the seats. Uh, I'm looking around the conference uh, at a time that the conference is expanding. Um, you're seeing changes made in programs of some pretty impressive coaches. Um, and that's just in the conference, we've had coaching changes in the last couple of days with people that have taken programs, taken teams to literally every BCS bowl there is. Um, we've got to get the program in a position to compete, uh, and we've got to do it pretty quick. I, or in my opinion, we're going to get left in the dust. Again, the, the opportunity was, in my opinion, right uh, if we were going to do this. Now, nobody wished more than me that, that Paul could have taken this thing. And I know about the quarterback situation and all of that, but all things considered, uh, you know, we got seven, eight wins this year. We're off and running. We're getting some excitement. And, uh, and nobody uh, would have liked that more than me, Vince. So you didn't think another year where, if there were, even if there was a possibility of seven, eight wins next year, that'd be too late? Well, I was thinking that last year. Remember, we were having this discussion a year ago. And I do feel a sense of urgency. When we talked to you yesterday, you mentioned that you were still making up your mind about what the decision would be. Yeah. When did you come to this decision? You know, uh, pretty much after I talked to Paul on Sunday. Um, it was weighing heavy on my mind uh, during the last few games of the season. Uh, we had a, a long talk, and I felt that another day uh, couldn't hurt. Uh, I needed to mull it around some more. I don't like to shoot from the hip. Uh, and you've all heard that uh, I, I don't fire coaches in the middle of the season. Sometimes that's necessary. Usually... Uh, uh, for behavioral reasons or something like that. So I wanted to stick with my coach through the season right to the end of the Apple Cup. Uh, but I pretty much 
had come to uh, my decision on Sunday. Bill, is there something you all could have said in that session Sunday to make a difference? Uh, Paul was uh, Paul was telling me what he felt the assessment of of the the program was, and where he wanted to take it. <clears throat> Very similar to the conversation we had a year ago. And uh, you know, I listened to him. I wanted to hear about recruiting. Wanted to hear about his coaches. Last year, after the same conversation, we made some coaching changes, and I think for the better. Um, so. It was one of those deals, Dale, where I f uh, it felt like it was about a 20-minute talk, and it was an hour and a half. And um, the, as you know, there was no decision made right at that time. I didn't tell him uh, that, that uh, he was on his way out. And then I thought to myself, and I told Paul and Sherry this uh, a little earlier, um, that Another day and a chance to be up in Spokane. Um, got, he went to the luncheon and felt the love of the fans because there's a lot of people, a lot of people that like Paul Wolf, and I thought that was important too. Uh, so that one more day, I didn't think uh, uh, really made that much difference. You mentioned the love for Paul Wolf and the situation he walked into as he was uh, attempting to rebuild this program. Um, all things being equal, if you didn't have the the pressure from finding dollars for the university in this uh, athletics program, would you have felt as strongly about your decision to not give him one more year to see if he could see things through? Uh, perhaps. Uh, we're, we got to understand here that uh, uh, we're, again, at a juncture where we've got to, we either got to run with the big dogs or just admit that we're a doormat. And I believe that we can be a contender for championships. But we can't wait and, and embrace mediocrity. Um, that's not going to work. We've, we've got to, uh, and I was hoping that this season would take us there, but it didn't. So um, I'd make the tough decision to hopefully find a way to, to get there with, a, with another, one, another person in that leadership role. What does this mean for the other coaches on the coaching staff? Has that decision been made yet? Well, yeah, uh, when, when, you, when you dismiss a head coach, the assistants are, are given notice as well. And uh, the practice usually is that the new uh, coach comes in, may, may retain one or two. Um, and certainly I'd hope that would be the case, especially in regards to recruiting. But that is strictly up to whoever gets the job. It sounds like none of the you don't have any internal candidates for this job. No, no. Is it concerning to you with the large number of openings at big name schools that you might not be able to attract a big name coach to home? Well, uh, for 18 months you've heard me say that this place deserves big name people and that it should become a destination and not a stepping stone. It's not going to until we have adequate facilities uh, that can help us recruit, and it's not going to until we change the mindset and the culture of our fan base. Um, so we've got work to do. My people are working out to doing a great job uh, in regards regarding our marketing and all of our promotions and those kind of things. But uh, uh, we'll go after and may I say this, you're looking at the search committee. That's how I do it. And uh, I've, I've been through these before. I've got good contacts. My practice has always been to have a, a, a short list in my upper drawer. I've done that for the 20 years I've been an athletic director. Because it's my responsibility, if there is a change, I've got to be ready to move and mobilize right away. Previous jobs, it's always been because uh, in the event a coach left to go to USC, Notre Dame, or Ohio State, or the Denver Broncos. You know, this is a different, little bit different. But I, I have a good networking out there, and I, I know coaches. I know coaches who can tell me about coaches. I know the athletic directors and, and that whole uh, world, uh, so you know, be on the phone a lot. Are you looking for current head coaches or up and coming coordinators? Ideally, a current head coach or a head coach 
or someone with head coaching experience anyway. Anybody out in keys? Uh, there's, a, there's, there's, there's a short list. <laughs> Have you reached out to anybody on that list? Um, I've had discussions, uh, not formal discussions, but I've talked to people. Is it important to you, seeing the rebuilding process Coach Wolf had to go through, to bring somebody in that runs a similar system to that so he can utilize a lot of the skills he has here? Well, we're, I'm not going to hire somebody that's going to run the Houston Veer. Uh, I, I believe that uh, you do fill the seats by having a, a flashy, uh, high-octane offense that lights up the scoreboard, and then you come back and win the championships with defense. Uh, right now, we've got to fill the seats. We need to win six, seven, eight games and, and get ourselves into, into both. You see, uh, you put the pencil to it, and I've done this several times, a, a program that's in a bowl game every year, Every year, so a fifth-year senior actually realizes a whole nother year of practice than those that aren't going to bowl games. So, you know, you talk about the craft fight, hunger bowl, or whatever. We need to get into bowls so we can develop young players, get more practice dates, uh, and 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 take that path. So, uh, to get back, I kind of went off on, on your question. Uh, I like a flashy offense. I like one that throws the football. Uh, I still think you got to run it. The game really hasn't changed a lot in 100 years. You've got to run the football and you've got to stop the run in order for all the other stuff to work. But it gets right down to technique and uh, uh, discipline, uh, fundamentals, and good players. Now, there's a lot of good coaches in this league and around the country, but uh, you've got to have good players, what and lots of them. What was the process like as far as notifying the team? Uh, the team is... Is, I, I, I put that with Paul, and he has a meeting with them at 4 o'clock. I'll meet with them later. Um, I also am going to keep two assistant coaches and our football operations person um, uh, guarding and watching over the program, making sure the players are going to class, they're in the weight room, and also recruiting. So uh, we're in the process of putting that together right now. What can WSU afford to pay a new coach? Well, uh, certainly think we can pay more than we have in the past because of uh, of the new television money. Uh, we've got roughly going to be 19 or 20 million more dollars coming in now. A good piece of that uh, is going to be uh, channeled into the facility enhancements. But uh, you look at what coaches are being paid now, and uh, if you're going to go – Go after uh, some, uh, a big name, or so you're going to have to throw throw some big numbers out in regards to a compensation package to be competitive, and that's what it's all about, guys. And it's we want to be competitive here. Uh, we've got to have facilities that allow us to do that. We have to have salaries. We we have to have an infrastructure that uh, will will permit that. And and again, I I come back and reiterate. I feel we have to do it now. Uh, I, may have to. You look around the league, uh, the, I think the average in the league is 1.5 or 6. I, you know, don't quote me there, Howie, but it's somewhere in there. What's your assessment of the talent level? Better than when uh, Paul got here by a, a long shot. Uh, in some areas, pretty doggone good. So in other areas, still lacking. Uh, and we're lacking in depth, Vince. This is a 12-game 12, 12 season now, and you're going to get those number ones chipped away. We saw it this year. And if the, if the talent level is, uh, is, is a pretty big gap between ones and twos, you're going to have trouble winning. Um, and that's just keeping players fresh, especially up front, and, um, and then injuries. As well, so we our our talent level uh, is good enough to win. Would the Apple Cup have saved Paul's job had, had you guys won? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, I'm, I'm not, you know, the Apple Cups is important to me as anybody. You know, having played in them and been around them and and all of that. Uh, but we should be winning Apple Cups. 
and we should be winning. We, you know, you hear Cougars, hey, you know, I just, I, I like kind of the way we're going. If we can beat the Huskies once out of four years, you know, that's not that's not what Bill Moose is about. I, I, I want to get the program to where the Huskies beat the Cougars once out of every four years. And until we get people's mindsets that, that way, we're not going to be able to do it. Can you or is there a, a focus on a coach that would plan on staying in Pullman for a considerable amount of time? Is that something you can look at when you're doing this search? Yeah, and again, I, I said earlier, you, in a perfect world, I want to see Washington State be a destination and not a stepping stone. It always has been a stepping stone because the things have not been in place that I just talked about. Uh, this is a great community. It's a fabulous university at a beautiful campus. Um, there's, there's a lot of features that I think are positives, but we can't compete with our competition in the areas of, of facilities, salaries, uh, and those things. So that that was my first focus when I got here, and it's ongoing. You've done several reports linking Mike Leach's name to this opening. What's your relationship with Mike? I know Mike Leach. Actually, Mike was here last spring uh, conducting a clinic for Paul and his staff. Um, pretty good record. Ten winning seasons, ten bowl games. I've read his book. Got to read his book. Um, and there's others out there. Um, I don't think Mike has coached for a couple of years, two or three years. I can't remember. Uh, but there's current active coaches um, that maybe even at the BCS level that I'm hoping you know might show some interest. Does Mike Leach on your shortlist? Yep. Yeah. Does his current lawsuit against the university and uh, ESPN make you apprehensive at all? Uh, if that was going to be serious and so forth, I'd have to look into it, John. Is Mike Lowy in your shortlist? Mike is on it, uh, but kind of a soft, in a soft way, because I don't, I don't think in my discussions with Mike that he's really serious about getting back into coaching. Uh, and, and I'd have to think... Uh, real hard about you know how long's Mike been out of it? Um, gosh, I guess three or four years himself, maybe two or three. Mike Bellotti's a great football coach um, and a very good friend, but I really haven't talked to him since uh, uh, the BCS championship game in Arizona last January. You mentioned you're the committee, so there's going to be no kind of consulting, consultation, anything like that. Will it be you? Out well, I might bring somebody in. You know, there's so much work in research, you, you know, and especially if you're moving fast. You've got to make sure there's no NCAA violations, those kind of things. You've got to kind of get the scoop on, on the coach from different angles while I would be having a, a direct communication. Yeah. 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 The, the what now? To help, to help in the search, you, you might bring somebody in, you're not sure. Try to hire somebody. Yeah. And with McCurdy, you mentioned a couple of assistant coaches might be kept on. Do you know who those will be? I, I'm, I need to talk to them still. Um, one of them's out recruiting, and, you know, the others are just trying to deal with this right now. So I want to put a little time between today and, and sitting down with those guys. Sean oh. needs the football operations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I don't know who's going to stay, um, but the the two I'm thinking of, I don't want to talk about now. But uh, I should have that in place by the end of the day or tomorrow. Back to the decision about letting Coach Moose go. Was there any outside factors at all that, that the president played have any influence on this decision at all? The president puts all these decisions uh, on my plate, and that's the way I wanted it when I was hired. He's been very supportive of me uh, in, in decisions I've made so far, and we've made other coaching changes. This is the fourth one in 18 months. Um, so we've had discussions, and um, uh, and when I went and, and uh, actually talked to him on Sunday and just to try to tell him what, where I thought I was going to go, he, he was a uh, very good listener and supported me. This decision obviously sounds like it's it's on you and 
kind of swinging for the fences here, and every, there are people who feel that there was an upward trend. Uh, is there any concern that this, the program state takes a step backwards as it brings in a new coaching staff with the people they have uh, aboard so far? Yeah, you always risk that. And, uh, you know, that's another reason to move fast. And, uh, you know, hopefully that, that we, and we talked about the offense and some of those things, that, that we'll be able to retain our current players because you have APR issues and other things when you start to lose, lose players, which, which I'm sorry to say is um, more the norm than not uh, during transition. So our, our hope, and we're going to work very hard, is to retain our current players and our, our commitments, our recruits. Is there any chance Paul Wolf could stay on in another role with the university, possibly with the next football coach? Well, I, I don't think so. That, of course, that's those decisions I don't make. Uh, I will say Paul's a talented football coach. He's got a, a good future ahead of him, and I'm going to support him any way I can, and and he knows that. A few more questions? Have you, know, you offered the job to anyone? No. Have you, uh, who have you talked to so far? Well, that's really getting started, you know. Today, I just, I just, I was just talking to Paul Wolf at ten o'clock. So, you know, well, the, you ask me that tomorrow, I'm not going to let you. Uh, <laughs> there, there'll probably be five or six or seven. Dennis Erickson, I short list. Uh, I never, I never would have thought that Dennis Erickson would be on a list because I thought he was at his final job. Um, and you know, there's a guy right there who's been. Coach of the Year in the conference at three different schools um, is in a bowl game. Had a late my son plays for him. Had a late season uh, slide, and uh, the games I went down to down there, there weren't a lot of seats filled <laughs> down there either. Uh, Rick Neuheisel, coaching at his alma mater, he's a game away and a long, a, a tough game away from being in the Rose Bowl. And he got uh, dismissed, I believe, yesterday. Um, it's a, it can be a nasty, cruel business. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, not at all costs, but uh, w we need to be winning here in order to, to have a chance to, to be in a position to to win championships. And I know, you know, some people you say win championships when they're Cougars and they kind of flinch. Well, why can't that happen here? Um, I certainly wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that. How many people are on your tour at this field? Well, it kind of changes, Howie. <laughs> Six, seven. Dirk Cutter on huh? uh, You know, at one time Dirk was, um, but I'm... And, and I haven't talked to Dirk for a long time. I think he's content where he is in the NFL. Good football coach. Do you have a question before we go to Are you going to have to know the next coach personally? Are you going to have to have, a, have had a relationship, or do you feel like you can just step right in? Well, I'm, go I'm going to have to have conversations and a, and a you know a trust there, and it's got to got to you know it's it's got to be a good chemistry. Um, and I've always been fortunate with the three football coaches I've had. We had great relationships. And they've always known that I was doing everything I could to get the resources and so forth to support them. So, um, but it's not that I'm going to have to know anybody. That uh, I'll, I'll get to know them as well as I can before I'm comfortable to hire them. Bill, I, I didn't know if they got answered directly. Is Dennis on the short list, Erickson? Ah, uh, he hasn't been. About uh, Kevin Sumlin. Kevin Sumlin's uh, Kevin Sumlin's been on the short list. We interviewed Kevin Sumlin. Have you talked to Mike Leach in the last 24 hours? No. All right, we will break up the one on ones, and then at uh, three o'clock, Paul will be. Josh, you guys want to?